everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tube, and welcome back. If this is your ninth Nancy Drew Season 4 episode review, hope you're doing well, hope you're staying safe out there. We're in the final countdown, we're in the final stretch of episodes, the final five. And uh, that, that, how do I say this correctly? Um, I, I feel like this might be my weakest Nancy Drew episode for the season so far. It, it felt a little bit off. It felt a little bit more like it, it's still a Nancy Drew episode. It's still weird, but it, it felt a little bit off for me. Not, not, it's not like, I'm not, I'm not trying to say this like this was a bad episode. I'm not trying to say that at all. This was still entertaining as always. It just, didn't really line up with, like, I don't know, maybe my ch my chakras could be all, maybe they were, like, just playing a little bit differently with this episode. Ah, I really don't know 100% with you, man, and I, I just, I was a little, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a let down, I'm just like, actually, that's not even the right word, I wasn't let down whatsoever, I just thought it to be, like, a little bit what I was not expecting, I'll say that much. Um, but this, this, this was a very, like, exposition, plot-heavy episode in its own way. Definitely, it just, this season is continuously starting to feel like this was not planned to be the final season whatsoever. They were planning on a five, a six, like, more to come, and then things happen. Leadership change, so they probably had to pivot this to be a finale. I'm pretty sure by the time we reach the last couple episodes, it will start to look like a series finale. Rather than now, they're, they're just working their way to a season finale. Um, uh, but yeah. Uh, but for me, of course, I just have to say that, you know, as much as this show is still good, that this, this, this was still a very good episode, I found at times to be a little bit like we're jumping a little bit, like we're reaching a little bit too much here. I think that's just my opinion about it. Uh, but with that being said, let's go for the Butcher Recap and talk about this week's episode of Nancy Drew. Uh, so we begin at Nancy's castle where she's training with Nick. Um, for some reason, I have no idea why Nick is the trainer here, because I guess just casting reasons. Um, because she's going to kill the, um, the Sin Eater with a bow and arrow. Well, a crossbow, to be more specific. Which I'm like, you're gonna kill a myth, a very supernatural being with a crossbow. Okay, not the craziest thing I've ever heard. I mean, I've watched 15 seasons of Supernatural, so I definitely have heard, I've heard my fair share of, like, we, we um, you know weirdness in that in that spear uh but there's still obviously a lot of pieces they're not connecting they still have to go back to the black room and get more answers uh there's a lot of things that has to go on with the drew, with the drew crew uh this definitely felt like the most spread apart episode of the bunch like if you like as much as there were time where like the gang was all together it still felt like there were like moments where like, everyone was kind of doing their own thing so to speak uh which is appreciate also kind of weird to like not kind of weird but like i found it to be a little bit odd it was just nancy and nick this episode like it just felt like I kind of out of the blue a little bit, um, so to so to speak, at least for me personally. Um, so they go back to the black room. Um, Nick whipped up this fancy tra contraction, or more like Tom Swift delivered him a device, and all Nick do, did was a little bit of coding di differences, and uh, which allowed them to like control the black door in a way. Once they use a little spell to summon it, uh, and they get an image of the founding fathers of Horseshoe Bay. Um, in a very eerie setting, but they don't get to see the full picture because the machine stops working halfway through. Typical Swift products. Just doesn't, doesn't fully work. I think this was taking place during Tom Swift's, you know, period of, like, his dad was missing, so I'm pretty sure he's not up to full snuff yet. Uh, but what can you do there? Um, meanwhile, across town, um, it's time for <coughs> Bess's uh, court date, um, to fight for the future of her and the horseshoe, and the, and the historic society. It's a pretty big one, as well as, you know, Carson, this is a, a, a teaching moment for George, who this is, like, the first official trial she's kind of being a part of, and while she will not have any, like, official say on the matter, this is, like, her, like, really learning the ropes of, like, to be a good lawyer, so definitely there's a lot of writing on here as well, you know, Carson's just like, gotta be, I know Bess is your friend, but, like, you gotta be very professional here, you can't get public advice, you have to get professional advice, there's a difference. And that's why most people say never represent the people you're friends with because you, your cloud will be judge will be judge will be um clouded. Uh, no, your judgment will be clouded. There you go. Uh, Ace in the meantime is once again stuck in purgatory duty. I.e., he is not with the rest of the cast. Uh, which I'm like, I'm pretty sure that was probably an interesting approach for Ace's actor to deal with. Uh, he's stuck on on I guess overnight duty or just solo duty again. Uh, his boss tells him they got a new body in. It's um, presumably a missing persons case that finally you know. Got um, got found. 
Uh, only thing of significance in this scene is that the guy, um, the boss, uh, his cup's almost fallen down by, by Ace's, like, you know, lack of coordination. So, and he stresses to his importance, this is my son's, like, a real gift that he's given me. So, this is valuable, I guess. Uh, Ace is starting to get to work on the paperwork for the dead body. And then all of a sudden he starts seeing mysterious things happening around the, um, the morgue and everything. It's very eerie for him, but of course he's starting to like, you know, realize this could be a sign from the beyond or something like that. Um, so yeah, I want to say, yeah, Nancy and Ace eventually, uh, Nancy and Nick, um, uh, take a break with their search. They go to support, um, Bess in her, uh, in her trial and um, when they get to the trial, they're just, like, ready for this to be the beginning of a long case um, against them. However, it turns out it's not 100% like that. So the prosecution is dropping their original charge against Beth, and they're, in fact, enforcing new charges against her, uh, which Carson uh, argues that it is way too soon and way too quick and sudden to announce all these new charges on the day of the original charges, which the judge is like, you know what? That's fair. We're not having the trial right now, but I'll give you 48 hours to go prepare a, a whole new defense for Bess. And honestly, like, I really felt it in um, Bess's actress in this episode. I think she really delivered in the emotional response. We're like, she could not catch a break whatsoever. She could not catch a break. Her girlfriend might be there, you know, quitting her, um, leaving work for the day to, like, you know, support her, to support her woman. And, uh, nope. Uh, turns out it's just a big old delay. That's all it really is. Uh, I want to say after this point, we reconvene with the Drew crew, and yeah, I'm a little lost in this episode, to be honest with you, like, it doesn't really progress too far much. I want to say, like, I'm, I'm, there's a lot of, like, differing points here. I know Nancy's finally, like, officially trying to, to like, make a date happen with, um, Tristan, the, uh, the glasses kid, the, the relic hunters kid that, uh, she's kind of been, like, you know, flirting with, quote-unquote. And, um, you know, she's still trying to skip the line because, like, again, like, she's ready to fully move on from Ace. Not fully move on from Ace, but, like, actually give someone else a chance because it seems like the Ace is, isn't, isn't happening anytime soon. But at the same time, like, you know, she's just like, how do I word this? Like, it's been a long time since she's been, like, interested in someone since, like, I think that, that, um, that, um, trail. I forgot his name. It's the guy from season two, the, the guy that lives in the trailer park, you know, the one that she was basically just, like, sleeping around with. Uh, I forgot what his name was, but, um... Yeah, that's the only case I can remember, to be honest with you. Uh, but yeah, so she's trying to skate that line, and, you know, she's just uh, also trying to realize, okay, I, I, I did promise him that, like, you know, I need to bring back the stomach, the, the mystical stomach pump that broke uh, uh, a bunch of episodes ago. Um, thankfully, for some reason, between for um, Ryan's new um, gig as uh, Relic Hunter, uh, he has a guy who can repair um, mystical devices, so... Nancy gets him the item. It works. He manages to somehow fix it. How did he test it? I really don't know. But he manages to get get it back in working order. And Nancy immediately tries to give it back to the glasses. But then it comes Ryan's, you know, late minute dad mode coming in where, like, he's concerned, like, why are you so rushy? What's going on? Is this, like, you know, is there anything you want to talk about? And Nancy's like, nope, everything's totally fine. And then all of a sudden the glasses show up and it's like, what you doing? Like, this isn't, like, you know, <coughs> like... We don't want you here. We don't want you anywhere near our son. Especially when Nancy left a note and a freaking paper play that says date, yes or no, for tonight. And I'm like, brah, like, you know, Nancy, you are just so... What the hell? Like, this is just, like, the worst way to... You have his number. And I'm like, come on. Like, this is like... You're just pruning... You're just pruning... You're just not even pruning the weeds here. You're not being direct over here. Um, so yeah, even Ryan's like, you know, also like, you know, kind of dismaying his, this, this support for the kid. Cause again, what the glasses did to what, what they try to do with, um, him and Beth. So I'm just like, damn, like, you know, it, there's not really any points here. Um, I know there's a scene where like Nancy and, uh, and Nick are trying to research about more about the black door, more about the, um, uh, the actual, um, history over things. And I do want to say eventually they come across something that revolves around a couple of teenagers that they faced a mural like a couple decades back that happened to be the parents to um, Bess's girlfriend. And uh, once they ask her, it's like, I don't know anything about this. Like, you know, this is not anything they talked about. Um, so Bess and, his, and her girlfriend go to the parents. They talk to them about, like, you know, what was about the mur mural. And they said, like, well, yeah, so the thing about the mural is that um, ho in our culture, Horseshoe Bay had this very dark history, Dad, with the uh, 
avid of like you know and honestly this can kind of relate to like you know how you know things are right now where like you know history gets you know the bad parts get snuffed out to just focus on the good parts um the thing about that is that they they knew about the dark history of the past because of their culture because of their because they were supposed to know the true history but the the town itself preferred to like you know keep that secret you know locked away so what they ended up doing was that okay so they tried defacing they tried to like remove the the new painting off of the uh that's on top of the original mural and they were unable to so they got charged for that and they eventually decided to like let it go and like you know keep living life for their daughter and so they have no ch they they had no choice but to keep themselves quiet about it, to keep the, to keep their daughter safe um and now the daughter wants to know like what what is the true history about this town you know what does this have to do and everything and this could also also help best out in the long run of just how important things are uh, with the truth, because it's always about the truth, you know. It's everything about the truth. Kind of a little, little cliche about that. Uh, I forgot there was a scene where George is kind of like, you know, flirting with the guy that, like, she went on a study day with last episode. So they're still progressing that storyline uh, piece by piece a little bit more so. Uh, I, I, I remember then we, we immediately cut to the, um, the next, like, the actual, like, um, court date where Bess goes up because, you know, in the middle of, you know, all this happening... Best got a got a got a deal where like they'll drop all the charges. There will be no court case, nothing of this sort. But Best has to formally denounce herself as you know being a liar. Well, no, she has to announce herself as a liar that supernatural doesn't exist. It was all something she made up just for the benefit of you know her um, her finances, and also that all this all the supernatural related text entries uh, within. Um, the historic society has to be locked away from the general public. Like, there cannot be any public access to these um, sort of these sort of items. Which, of course, Bess is like, this is while well, this might be an easy way out because again, remember, Bess is not here. I think I think they said like she's not here legally or she's on a visa. I forgot what the reason was, but she's not a, she's not a native citizen to America. So if she gets prosecuted, there's a good chance she has to get sent back to her to her to uh, to Europe. Which she doesn't want that. This is not. This is not like. Th this is not the plan. So there's a part of her that really does want to take the plea deal and just like you know, so she could stay stay in um, Horseshoe Bay. But at the same time, that would be going against her belief. That would be going against you know herself as a person, and she's not down with that. So off screen, they uh, the uh, her girlfriend interviews her parents, basically giving like the true history of Horseshoe Bay, how it was you know really founded, and that and they put it inside this. Um, liquidy powder sort of thing that um would be allowed to like help best you know kind of se um sell her case where she expresses about like you know like we have to tell the truth like everyone has to tell the truth and so she takes the powder that her girlfriend like kind of like you know infused with her with her voice i guess and she blows it to the uh, the nearby mural in the courthouse which uh reveals that horseshoe bay was not created it was just found it was not created it wasn't found it was discovered that there was a whole different um, set of people that were living here at the time and at the, at the at the moment they were just cohabitating together like you know okay you stay in your area we stay in our area but you can you know use our resources you know that might not agree with. however um the uh, the people that came over here the visitors they didn't want to agree with that they wanted this to be their own land they uh, they needed to take this land away from them so um they took their children and th th that's what the mirror reveals, like, you know, the, the where the, uh, the, the travelers took all the children away from the, from the natives here, and they, they were holding them hostage. I forgot if they did anything serious with them or not, I completely forgot what the reason was, but in reality, that was, like, kind of, like, just, like, a, a, like, a really big, like, um, that was a really big deal, to say the least. Um. Uh, and then, you know, everyone's kind of amazed because, like, hey, Bess kind of did that. It's like, whoa, what the hell? You just changed that mural, like, all of a sudden with just a powder trick? And, of course, like, the, you know, the freaking, like, those, um, the, the the people that are going against Bess, they're like, that's just magic. That's just, like, you know, she's just playing a trick on us, guys. Like, that's not anything really supernatural. Don't worry about that whatsoever. Um, and I'm just like, damn, like, you know, the, you're seeing this happen to you and you still are not in belief in it. I mean, again, like, there's magicians and everything. Like, so that could be plausible too but i'm just still, still still saying like damn oh yeah for, uh, speaking of that i completely forgot about ace um so ace apparently is talking to the dead woman um that the court of the recent corpse that just came in uh he's been trying to talk with her because like it just seems like she ref she's refusing to like you know leave this um this world in peace and ace is like doing everything he can to try and communicate with her eventually he puts his hands 
in this like batch of cold ice water and somehow for the patching of coincidence uh it works he manages to like you know get through to her he gets to talk to her like you know figured out what's going on and you know manages to actually you know help her a little bit so to speak um so yeah, even though they told their side of the story, best told their side of the story, you know, as, as much as this is the beginning of like, you know, telling the truth, you know, definitely there's still an uphill battle to climb. Cause again, like it's kind of hard to prove something from many years ago. Like it's really, it really is hard. Like that mural might be proof, but like, you know, anyone could say like it's fake or something like that. So that's something that you got to really note about. Uh, we cut back to the courthouse and uh, the judge delivers the sentence like best is found not guilty for the crimes that um, she's being accused of. However, because of just everything she's done recently, in terms of her general actions, the, the judge is like, yeah, you are not the right fit to take over the historic society. So instead, we're going to give it to the people that are suing you. They're going to take over the historic society. You'll be turning over your keys and you basically lost your job. Which I'm like, that is really like the harshest thing you can do. Like, you know, you're not guilty, but you're still being punished. Which I'm like, that's that's still being guilty in a way. Like you're still punishing her. Like, so it's like, what was the point of the not guilty verdict? That's just like something that I don't, I, I kind of disagree with. Uh, and obviously Bess is appalled. This is like not the result that, that she wanted. And again, I get kudos to her actress for like really like selling it. This episode of like her emotions, her facial expressions are like, just, it just sells so much. And like, you know, there's nothing she can really do. There really isn't anything she can do. Like she kind of have to accept her loss and like, you know, move on. If I, like, you know, that's a shitty thing to say, but, like, you know, there really is nothing they, could th they think she could do at this current moment. She has a one-on-one -on -one with George. You know, George apologizes to her a little bit for, like, you know, not giving her the best counsel possible. You know, she's still learning herself, so, like, definitely she should have kept their mouth shut more often on this case than, than she should have. Uh, but, again, this um, best, you know, calls her her best friend. And it's, like, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of sweet because, like, again, you look at these two people and, like, you never would know that they're friends in general, let alone best friends. And the fact that they are like, it's, it's just so it just works. And, it, and really it's like, it's sweet. It's sweet in a way. So, um, uh, kudos to them for like, again, like, you know, the last few episodes have been really selling of like these people, they are a family. They do care about each other so much. Um, best goes back to the historic society, starts packing up her stuff. Finally, her girlfriend's there for more support, but of course the uh, the new owners there just you know again wagging that big old big old rooster just saying like yeah I won you know you gotta get the hell out of here you're like your ways are over it's time for like the real way to showcase this uh, this historic land site to to go about and also if you ever come back here for any reason I will call the police on you and for trespassing so just know you're not welcome back here which I'm like that's a really big red flag and I really hope this woman gets what's what's coming to her eventually I really hope so. Um, so yeah, so we come, oh uh, yeah, so I forgot at the end of the court scene, like, you know, Nancy, um, Texas, the guy, they're confirming their date. Everything seems to be working out pretty well for them. Uh, so now the main like continuation happens where the Drew crew, um, sans ace, but you know, Ryan's filling in, um, regroup at, uh, at Nancy's castle where they're going to have George go over to summon the, um, the sin eater because apparently, um, the way to summon is you go to the black door, you confess your sins, that you want to get rid of it, and normally that will trigger the sin eater to come to your location and to kill you. Well, presumably to kill you, but like really just take away all your sins. Um, Nancy will go in with the poison dart, supposedly. Again, how is a poison dart supposed to kill like this freaking supernatural being? I really don't know, but you know, Bob's your uncle there, so. Um, George, um, in her sin, which I'm like, I'm pretty sure you committed much as many sins before, but like, just for the sake of this. Um, George goes over to Ace's workplace to give, like, Ace's, like, his first real, uh, interaction in this episode. She just takes the cup from that, um, the boss had and breaks it in front of Ace. And Ace is just like, I am so fired. And I'm like, Ace, if you're not fired yet, you ain't gonna get fired. Don't worry, bro. You got this. You got this, bro. Um, yeah, so from that point onwards, yeah, George goes back to the black, to the black door. She summons the, uh, the Sin Eater. She does the ritual. And Nancy heads out to go uh, find the Sin Eater her herself. Uh, no one wants to volunteer to go with her, so Ryan has to, like, man up and go over there um, her himself to, like, protect Nancy, or at least keep Nancy company whatsoever when, when she uh, goes to find the Beast. Um, Nick and Bess being, like, they have nothing to do in this, the rest of this episode. They're looking for the um, the journals that um, Nick stole from the, from the Black Room site uh, earlier in the episode. He's looking through it, and he notices that one of the covers kind of feels a little hollow so 
he opens it up and it reveals this slew of hidden pages. That's basically a bunch of drawings of the um, of the um, of the eight people that are known to be related to the Sin Eaters, you know, uh, actions. And they're reading through it. And it's a picture of the guy. It's a sketch or the woman. It's a sketch. And they look in the back. It's a list of all the children, presumably that you know when the original founders kidnapped them. And now they're trying to put the pieces together because they, it actually is like a, a foldable paper. So they open it up. And they notice this weird, like, ritual-like cycle where it kind of looks like the Sin Eater. And they put the pieces together where apparently the sin, these children are being offered as Sin Eater hosts. That they become the Sin Eater. That eventually it dies and then it takes over a new body and it continues its legacy there. And they realize the Sin Eater isn't a supernatural being. It's an actual real person. Uh, and they can't kill it because, like, there could still be a real person inside of it right now as we speak. So um, they call up Nancy, but that doesn't work. So they call up Ryan. They tell Ryan, and Ryan slowly is, like, registering this information when Nancy discovers the Sin Eater right in front of her. She shoots him with the poison arrow, and it seemed like that's it. Like, okay, it, it should be dead now, right? But nope, she looks, um, because it was holding something, she looks on in its left hand. It's the, um, the plate. Or the seashell, I forgot which one it was, uh, with the with the with the date request that she left, indicates that the sin eater, at least at this current margin, is I forgot his name. I, I, it's the the guy that um, Nancy's interested. In. I forgot his name already. Uh, and that's the end of the episode. I'm a little confused. Like this was a little bit of a confusing episode at times because like they were jumping a lot over the place. This is one of the rare times where like the multiple story arcs did not flow. Correctly, there was like harsh stops and everything else. Like, I really have, I was missing something. Maybe I was just like completely not feeling this episode 100, which is usually a rarity. Um, but honestly, like, no, like I still feel like you know this be being more focused on Bess and her battle with the uh, with the other society was was also crucial and important as well to have her lose and like still like have her feeling like what do I do now? Obviously, remember Nick just offered to like build you a whole new secret historic society, so. You're good, bro. You're good. Obviously, it's a big loss to lose this piece of, of, of history, but, like, you know, at least you'll be able to continue your mission elsewhere. Um, Nancy finally coming to turn to, like, you know, a fully, like, it's always, like, when Nancy's ready to move on, when she's ready to, like, take the next step with someone, they die or they move away. It's just so coincidental. Like, it's not even funny anymore. It's like, Nancy cannot get a break. So I, it's probably just signs saying that you and Ace are meant to be together. So stop with this other guy, BS. Stop with that. Um... But yeah, the ending with the city here. Okay, I feel like that's that's gonna probably require flashbacks or like another way of like actually telling the story. Cause like I was a little bit confused by it. Like you know, they spent a little too long with that scene. Nick was doing a, a little bit too much exposition, uh, so I felt like this needed like some more like another creative way to tell the scene the city your story. Maybe they will in the last few episodes. I really don't know. I just didn't like the way they approached it here. Um, Again, is is um the the sin eater really dead? I I really don't know. Like, there's a chance he could just be mortally wounded, and now Nancy kind of like you know sc skimmed her uh, his life a little bit. I really don't know to be hundred percent with you, but I will say is that it got interesting, and I'm very curious to see how they're going to progress um with the storyline going forward. But for now, I'm just gonna give this episode one and a half thumbs up. So enjoyed it, but just it, it it's the weakest of the Nancy Drew episodes this season so far. Uh, which, again, was going to happen. Like, you can't have, like, a banger after banger every episode. It's impossible. Yeah, you got to have a downer once in a while. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's going to do it for me today, everyone. Let me know in the comments below what you think of this week's episode of Nancy Drew. I would love to have a conversation with you down below, as always. Uh, but I believe that's going to do it for me today, everyone. So if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from Max Chicks, reviewing every episode in the final season of Nancy Drew. If you want to know what we're doing normally, What's the Two besides our Nancy Drew episode reviews. Uh, currently, right now, we are doing... The Crowded Room episode reviews each and every week. And starting up in a couple of days, we'll be doing our Heels episode reviews each and every week uh, after brand new episodes on their respective platform. But if you don't care about Nancy Drew, you're in luck. We'll be back next week with another brand new episode review for you. So stay tuned until then. But until then, stay safe out there. Be good to each other. Please subscribe, ring the bell, follow us on social media, do all the usual rigmarole stuff. Uh, but until next time, uh, for all you members of the Drew crew out there, stay safe out there, be good to each other. And as always, peace out.